Good morning everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, the home of Healthy Delicious. Wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and whatever it is you may be doing. I hope you are well and I hope that you are safe. Thank you for joining me on this very special edition of um, our celebration of Indian cuisine. We've been doing it all week here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. And so far we have done an amazingly delicious turmeric chai, so a lovely tea, which is nice and spicy and warming and just absolutely fabulous. We have also, uh, at the beginning of the week, I taught you guys how to make two versions of a very healthy onion budgie. I shared with you my creamy coconut korma recipe a couple days ago and right now we're going to bring it all together with a fabulous little Indian sweet cooking class because if anyone has ever ever experienced the utter delight that is Indian sweets you know how fabulous they are. I was lucky enough to be introduced to them from our daughter Coco who just adores them, she absolutely adores them. Um, and the last time we had some Indian sweets, she took me to a, um, to a traditional Indian sweet store in Harris Park, which is in a suburb in Sydney, very close to Parramatta. They have the most amazing Indian restaurants, lots of Indian sweet stores. And so she took me in there and she knew exactly what she wanted. She went for barfi, which is a very traditional, um, traditional milk-based um, Indian sweet. And she also went for ladu. Now ladu um, is, is similar to barfi, so it does have um, the fat content, which is usually from ghee. There are some spices in there, and it's traditionally made with chickpea flour. But today's version, I'm gonna teach you guys a healthy way. Oh, of course, I forgot one ingredient that, that make, that's sort of quite common across Indian sweets is there's lots and lots of refined sugar. So I've removed the sugar from this, um, from this particular recipe, the ladu. I have also taken out any gluten, there's no uh, grain or flour in there. But what, I've, what I'm also going to give you guys is an option to be a bit traditional and add the ghee, and I'll talk about ghee a little bit soon, but you can also make a dairy-free option by using coconut oil as well. So up to you guys how you do it, but I'm glad you're joining me. This is going to be a fabulous little class and the flavour of this ladu, it's a coconut and cardamom ladu. Is Awesome. So let's get into the recipe. It is um, pretty simple to make, but there are a few things that I'm going to be doing a little bit different in the kitchen today. You may notice I'm going to teach you guys, um, I'm going to show you guys how to open a fresh coconut for a start. So let's get into that because our ladu, come on down to the bench. Our ladu is the one that we're making today. Uh, we're going to be using actually fresh coconut. So this is a drinking coconut, quite a young coconut. Um, so I thought I would show you guys how I open a coconut and how I've been, um, in fact, I have this really cool little instrument here. It is known as a cocoa jack. It comes with this quite heavy metal piece and also comes with this really cool bright yellow hammer. <laughs> and I bought this um, when I used to do a lot of events and one of my clients wanted to have fresh coconut um, for I think there was like 200 guests. So I had to make sure to have enough fresh coconut for 200 guests and opening it so they could drink out of it. So I bought a couple of these and they saved my life, this Coco Jack. So you can buy this, this online if you've never seen one, but how it works is you put it basically on top of the coconut. Obviously the husk has been, the outer, outside really um, dark brown husk has been removed and I'm left with the inside. Now here's, if you've never um, done anything with fresh coconut before, be very careful because this here, which is kind of the skin of the inner husk, this here will stain your clothes. So just be aware that you don't want to be touching your clothes after this because it will stain your clothes. So with our Coco Jack, are you ready? <laughs> we put that down like this. It's going to make a bit of a noise obviously because I'm going to I'm going to hammer it. We put it down on top of the coconut and then taking our little cool little yellow hammer, you hammer down and things start moving in the kitchen when this happens as well. So what you get from all this hammering is you start to actually get this lovely little dent in here. And I know it doesn't require a little bit of work, but you get the perfect circle to use this as a drinking coconut, which is what I love. So a bit more hammering. And you have the best 
eventually going to get down far enough that you'll see that what you're actually able to do with your Coco Jack, a little bit more, is you're actually able to go ahead and remove the top of it and what you get is this perfect can you see that perfect circle for drinking your coconut add a couple of straws and then you have got fresh delicious coconut water and I of course am not going to be wasting any of that wonderful coconut water so I've got a jug here because I'm going to extract the coconut water into the jug because what I actually want is the coconut flesh that sits just inside of this so uh, without trying to spill Mm. Oh, it's a little bit. There we go. That's how much water you get out of that one little coconut. Isn't it fabulous? So I'm going to keep that to the side because that is going to be absolutely delicious. But what I actually want is what's inside the coconut to make our ladu. So I've um, got myself my little, my little blender and then I've got a, teaspoon, a tablespoon somewhere. What you want to do is you just want to scrape down Scrap down and remove that wonderful soft look at it, that soft flesh. I prefer using uh, young coconut here because I really do love what that tastes like. That little gentle bit there. I know, um, know for Mahei, he likes his coconut to be a little bit older. Um, it does have a, a lot more um, coconutiness to it, but you just want to extract without husk. You don't want husk. You want it. No, he likes it all. He likes it all. Um, you want to extract that wonderful soft flesh that is just hiding inside of your coconut there. So we're going to extract as much as possible and I'm putting it straight into my little blender. Oh actually I've forgotten a step. Bear with me as I just continue to get the rest of this out and it's so different to the older coconut this here. It's so different if you've never tried it and you, you know, you think you'd like to, I would definitely recommend that you give it a go because it tastes so incredibly different from, uh, obviously from dried coconut, desiccated or, you know, coconut shreds, but also to the older coconut, um, it doesn't get as soft as that. So that's extracting it all out. But what I actually want to do is I want to, I need to weigh it because this is how we know how much coconut we've got in there, obviously. So I'm going to weigh it straight into here, tip that in, so I, wow, that's pretty good, I extracted 90 grams, which is 3 ounces of flesh from the coconut, but this is why it's important that you weigh it, because what we want in total, and it's all going to depend on your coconut, what we want in total is a, about 150 grams, which is about 5.5 ounces of coconut, so I managed to extract 90, every coconut is going to be different from what you can extract from it. Hence why I'm now going to be adding in, I've just got some organic coconut here, and this just got coconut flakes. I'm going to be adding enough of the uh, dried coconut to bring me up to a total amount of 150 grams. So I'm going to put that back on there. We put in our flesh of our fresh, young, glorious coconut goes in first. And then I'm going to add enough of my organic uh, shredded coconut, you could obviously use this desiccated, but pick a good quality one because you want these ladles to taste absolutely delicious. And we're going to go up to 150 grams here, which is about five and a half ounces. 150. Perfect. All right. So that's all the coconut that we need for this recipe. And I think it's that use of the fresh coconut in, in this recipe that makes it so special. It really is quite a special treat. So taking up my little machine, we're just going to blend this until it's really, really small and really fine. And you might find that halfway through, you would like to just scrape down the edges. So using a little spatula, bring it all into the middle and we'll give it one more blast. And can you make this particular recipe without this machine? Probably not. You're going to need a little mini food processor or a food processor. Because, you know, what's happening now is I'm creating this wonderful, almost like a mash of coconut. It's, it's kind of, the texture's kind of like that. You can see it's kind of, kind of um, very, very soft. 
definitely wouldn't say it's desiccated coconut because it, 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 it's about the size of desiccated coconut, but because we have the fresh young coconut in there, which is lovely and it's full of moisture, we get more like a paste, which is what you're after, that sort of style of paste. So now that that's done, put this off to the side, we're going to think about the other ingredients that we're going to be adding into our ladu, and we're going to be moving over here to my little cooktop does require a little bit of cooking but not too much so I need to weigh off 50 grams and I'm using almond flour but you could use any type of nut flour here or even seed flour is completely up to you I'm using almond flour because it's got quite a neutral taste and I'm going to be adding 50 grams which is 1.7 ounces of my almond flour or almond meal straight into my pot once again you'd be like huh why are you putting it straight into your pot? This is very cool, by the way. This technique that I'm going to teach you guys now is super cool. So we're going to go over to the cooktop. And what I actually want to do is to start to toast the coconut. So we're going to be adding, obviously, some heat to this. And in my little pot here, we're going to create a lovely toasted, uh, it's not coconut, almond. It's almond bridge. We're going to be, we're going to be creating a really wonderful toasted almond flavor which is going to add to this ladu in such wonderful ways so that is just going to toast itself quite nicely it takes you know it takes a couple of minutes but you definitely at this point you do not want to walk away because much like you know everything that we do here it does require you to keep an eye on it because it does toast up once it starts toasting it can go from toasted to burnt pretty quickly so you want to keep an eye on it you know give it a bit of a stir every now and again just to make sure that parts of it aren't sticking and already I can start to smell the fact that this is beginning to toast up for us so your nose will help here and that's why I always say and I'm getting a little bit of color on the bottom too I always say that um, you know cooking is not just about the visuals it's also about how things sound but of course there's a the whole um, the whole part of how things smell as well because right now I am getting the most incredible lightly toasted aromas coming up from our pot smacking me in the face and it is just absolutely sensational so don't walk away keep on stirring because as you're stirring because what's happening is the the stuff on the bottom it's going to turn it down by the way I was doing that all on on, on medium the stuff on the bottom is going to going to toast faster than the stuff on the top so that's why we're just going to keep on stirring it keep on giving it that bit of heat and your nose will tell you and also the color will just start to look more toasted and it will tell you that it is pretty much ready so that's our toasted almond pretty cool huh I'm like totally cool now you've just made toasted almond and it just took a couple of seconds just with our almond meal so that is one ingredient and the next thing, the ingredient we're going to going to use, we can actually do all the rest of this pretty much in the pot, which is kind of cool too. So we've got our toasted almonds. I'm going to add in our coconut paste that we made. That's going to go straight into here as well. Oh, we can hear. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, no. We've made a mess. We've made a mess. Never mind. Everything can be saved. So the paste goes in, and I'm going to clean my bench because, ill. there you go, you guys can't see the mess now. <laughs> I'm hiding it from you. I'm hiding it. All right. So that goes in. Uh, the next ingredient that we're going to be using is an ingredient found very, very commonly um, in Indian and Middle Eastern cuisine as well. We're going to be using some ghee. I know it's backwards, but it's G-H-E-E. -E. This is ghee. Now, ghee is, um, this particular ghee, by the way, it's from New Zealand. I found it in Costco here in Sydney. It's from New Zealand, and it is a grass-fed ghee. So it's a really, really good quality ghee. Um, what's the company called? They're called Pure Soul, and it's a gourmet clarified butter, because that's basically what ghee is. It's a clarified butter. But in saying that, it is different from clarified butter. So clarified butter, what you normally do is you put a whole block of butter into a pot and then you cook it 
until the milk solids separate from the butter fat and you get left with pure butter fat. With ghee, it's the same process, so we are using a clarification process, but it is done very, very slowly, very, very gently, and it's that, that action of it that being done very, very gently means that we retain more nutrients and more minerals are, uh, contained in the ghee as opposed to just straight clarified butter. So I'm putting in a heaped tablespoon of our ghee's going in there. If you want to go dairy free, what you can do instead of adding ghee is add coconut oil. But let me just say that ghee will give you more of a traditional flavor to the sweet as opposed to coconut oil, but there's nothing stopping you from if you want to go completely dairy free. I'm just giving it a bit of a stir and more to the point about how amazing ghee is, is that ghee is, well it's not, obviously not dairy free because it comes from butter, it comes from cows, but it is lactose free. So if you have a lactose intolerance, you can happily use ghee. Now I will preface that by saying everything in moderation. And you notice I only put in a tablespoon of ghee into this entire mixture. So I'm not suggesting you go out and you eat this with, with, um, with crazy abandon. Everything in moderation, because obviously this is still a saturated fat. It is a healthy fat though, a very healthy fat. So that's our ghee. You could use, as I was saying, coconut oil if you want to go completely dairy free. But if, you just, if you're looking at this right now, we are still lactose free, which is really, really good. And one of the things, other things about good healthy fats is that they help certain vitamins and minerals which are known as being fat soluble so they need fat to actually be absorbed by the body and become bioavailable a healthy fat like ghee makes sure that those vitamins and minerals are going to be able to be absorbed once they get into your body so all the vitamins and minerals that you're getting from your food if you're not having healthy fat in your diet you will not be getting the benefits of those vitamins and minerals at all because they need a fat in order to become bioavailable in your body which is um healthy fats like ghee like coconut oil like avocado oil like olive oil those are all healthy fats that we can include in our diet okay so the next stage once we've got that in there is i'm going to be adding my sweetness and with the sweetness i'm going to be adding our sweet as fiber syrup into straight into here so I'm going to put it back onto the scales and I'm going to be adding in 100 grams of our fiber syrup which is 3.5 ounces so what we have done now this is where normally you'd add refined sugar right if you're doing a real super traditional lamu but um, with this one we are adding a fiber syrup which means we're added well, we've added fiber for a start that's the first thing but we've also now turned this into a prebiotic so this is going to help to feed your gut bacteria, which is what probiotics are your gut bacteria and your prebiotics is what your probiotics feed on. So give that a bit of a stir. I'm now going to put that back on to cook, but I'm going to put it onto a lower temperature. So medium to low. We don't want to get it too hot here. We don't want to burn it because that would just be awful. Give it, keep on giving it that little bit of a stir. Oh, it smells so good. It's about to smell even better because the spice that we're going to be adding into our ladu is probably the most classic, one of the most classic spices. Not probably, but is definitely, well, arguably one of the most classic spices in not just Indian cuisine, but like in there's so many cuisines utilize the spice so well, and that is cardamom. So I'm using ground cardamom, and I'm going to be adding it into our, um, straight into our pot. And with our ground cardamom, you want, oh, my teaspoon doesn't fit. You want about a teaspoon and a half of ground cardamom. Seems to give it a very, very good flavor. And oh my goodness, if you could only smell this now, it has continued to transform. It's transforming. Every time I add a new ingredient, it transforms and it's just so exciting. I mean, the most exciting thing for our daughter Coco is definitely walking into that Indian sweet store and seeing all the beautiful colors that, that are in the sweets. And it, it breaks my heart because it's inherently not that great for us because it's, it's loaded in ghee. 
um, and it tends to be loaded also in, um, it's very high in carbs, so it's got so much refined sugar and usually lots of um, carb flours like chickpea flour as well. Whereas we've kind of left that all out, we're keeping the fat content at a place where it's just going to be good for our bodies because that, that ghee is really good for us and it's beautiful to know, you see I'm just, I'm continuing to stir as we're doing this, it's really good to know that you know, a healthy fat like ghee in moderation is beneficial to our bodies. And you know, in, in um, Ayurvedic medicine, it is considered sacred. So ghee is actually considered sacred because not only in the right quantities is ghee really good for your body, it becomes you know, that fat soluble vitamins and minerals. Um, and because it's cooked slowly, it's high in vitamins and minerals. But ghee also promotes longevity. So this is the type of, of product that is going to feed our brain and keep our brain younger and healthier, which is going to help to promote longevity. And it's also um, going to help to fight off disease because it's an antioxidant. So really positive things about ghee. Um, they are out there and they are super positive, but it's about the quantities that you have it in. And it's also about making sure if you're choosing some ghee, you're choosing one that is grass fed. It is grass fed and good quality. And you know what? When I saw this in Costco, um, and I saw it was from New Zealand, not biased, but I know that in New Zealand, having lived there pretty much all of my life, is that it is a country full of green rolling hills. They've got happy cows and, and happy animals that are, that are living in paddocks, as a, you know, in green paddocks or pastures, as opposed to mass feedlots and being fed food they're not supposed to eat. Cows are supposed to eat grass, it's what they do. They're not supposed to eat grain, it's not part of their diet. So choose a ghee that is of good quality. And like, you know, I'm not sponsored by these guys, I've never met them in my life, but this is something that you want to look for. Whether it's from New Zealand, from your, obviously ideally it's, it's coming from your own country because it doesn't have to travel as far to get to you, but make sure it's grass fed. So what's happening now in my pot is I'm just cooking it out a little bit. It's already nice and thick, as you can see. It's already nice and thick. It's almost like a porridge. Probably a porridge that a lot of you wouldn't eat because I know people just can't stand thick porridges. I had memories of lumpy porridge as a kid. Ooh, not a fan. So it kind of looks like lumpy porridge, but that's absolutely fine for our needs. This is what we're looking for. And you want to cook this out on that medium to low heat for around about five to eight minutes it's going to cook out which gives me enough time because we're, we're a couple minutes away until i'm going to i'm going to go to the next stage it gives me a bit of time to talk about cardamom so come up here for a second so i can see your beautiful faces <laughs> i want to talk about cardamom because the, the beautiful thing about what we've done this week especially here in bridget's healthy kitchen and the fact that we have been celebrating the beautiful cuisine of india all week is that there is so many beneficial spices that Indian cuisine uses and cardamom is one of them. I spoke quite a lot about turmeric. We made our turmeric chai the other day and I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys um, you guys got the gist of how much I love turmeric. Like I said, I'm surprised I'm not bright yellow because I've been eating, I've been drinking so much of that turmeric chai over the last couple of days especially. But um, the wonderful thing about, about this spice cardamom, and of course you can buy it whole in pods and grind it yourself in a little spice grinder, or you can buy it obviously pre-ground if you don't have a spice or coffee grinder. But the wonderful thing about um, cardamom is it is antioxidant, which means it helps to fight off free radicals, which are what a disease causing things that basically they are. They're free and they're floating around in our body. Well, an antioxidant, if you ever hear that word, that means that an antioxidant is helping to fight against those free radicals that will cause disease. So that's one thing, it's antioxidant. It is also anti-inflammatory. So once again, it will help with, you know, with um, people who suffer from mobility issues or if they have, um, you know, joint pain. Anti-inflammatory is a, a real bonus in any type of food that we're having. It is also antibacterial, which means that once again, it will help to fight off bacteria, like disease-causing bacteria. It is amazingly good for the gut, so it's good for our, uh, the health of our gut as well, and will help with digestive issues. Um, but this is a really cool thing that is um, 
pretty unique to cardamom as a spice is it, it will also help to fight bad breath <laughs> so um you can literally have some cardamom and get kissing because you're gonna have great breath so it will help to fight bad breath but oral health in general when it comes to cardamom it will also help to fight off cavities so pretty cool stuff right really really cool little spice but i gotta say i was taken with cardamom before i even did all this research you know to find out why it's such a beneficial and and such a widely used herb in ayurvedic medicine uh spice sorry is that it tastes amazing it really has a very unique very delicate it's a delicate spice but it is unique to cardamom i don't know any other spice that even comes close to the same type of flavors that you will pick up from this incredible spice so come back down because we're nearly ready to go um it's looking really really good so it's thickened a little bit it's starting to stick to the bottom of my pot but you're literally doing the stirring action um you know for sort of five to eight minutes on medium to low just to cook this out a little bit further and i'm pretty happy with the texture that it's at now so it's very very lumpy as you saw it's lumpier than before like if you got served that oatmeal you'd probably like my um i think it was my dad and i'm telling you know sharing a family story but there was a sister-in-law of his who was a lot she was a bit older than him and she wasn't great at cooking porridge and porridge was what they had pretty much every morning and dad was quite i think he was about 10 at the time so he used to didn't want to be rude and didn't want to eat her porridge so he used to put the lumpy porridge into his pockets <laughs> he put them in his pockets and he went to school uh yeah that's my dad's story about lumpy porridge so you're after really seriously lumpy a little bit dry porridge so the next stage is we want it to cool down so i have a tray here that i've lined with some baking paper just it's going to make it easier um so it doesn't stick obviously and then you're just going to lump the mixture onto your baking paper Ugh. i'm making a mess today don't know why some days it's like that right we all have those days in the kitchen and today seems to be my day for making a mess right get everything out of your pot do not waste any of this wonderful gorgeous mixture oh i've got some coconut in there too Ow that's okay even scrape off your wooden spoon you don't want to like seriously you do not want to waste the deliciousness which is ladu it oh gosh it's just so the te it's not just the texture but it's also the flavor and then you consider all the wonderful things that you're doing for your body at the same time and it, it's it's a no-brainer for the girls right bit more baking paper what i would like to do now is just to flatten it out obviously this mixture is quite warm so um the baking paper helps to prevent third degree burns which is usually helpful but you know you can also um get a rolling pin and just roll it out you want to make it pretty thin all i'm trying to do i'm going to use my cocoa jack because it was handy um all you're trying to oh gosh this is fun i feel like thor and his magical hammer i do i feel like thor like it'll just arrive in my hand at any point in time I've never used a hammer to soften, to, to, to measure something out like this and to, to flatten it out. And I have to tell you, it's extremely satisfying to feel like Thor, the god of thunder, making ladu. Oh, see his hammer is so underutilized, isn't it? He could be using his hammer for lots of things, like making healthy Indian sweets. All right, so we're just flattening it out with our hammer or a rolling pin. <laughs> You don't have to use a hammer but it was fun i have to say and it's nice and warm too and it's cold in my kitchen today i haven't had the oven on all right thank you thor hammer all right what we are left with is a mixture that we just want to cool a little bit so we're just going to put it off to the side here and it's going to cool down for us while it's cooling down we're going to consider what we're going to put on the outside of it because what we're going to be doing with these is we're going to roll them into little balls so that's why we're just allowing it to cool down a little bit yeah that's going to that's going to work just let it to cool down so i can actually touch it with my hands and get it rolling but you then want to think about what you would like to put on the outside of your ladu what sort of 
what sort of flavours, what sort of colours. Um, I have seen there's a lot of use of pistachios when it comes to, um, you know, those sort of lovely look and taste when it comes to nuts and Indian sweets. But today I'm actually going to be using, I've got some um, pecans here. I have some raw pecans and I thought what would be really nice is I'm going to use some rose petals as well as my little outer layer around the ball. So when it comes to your rose petals, if you've never seen, look at so cute. This is just a little dried rose petal, edible dried rose petal. You can make that into tea, which is quite common. But what I like to do with it is I like to remove the little green bit at the bottom there. You don't, you don't want to eat that. Remove the green bit and then what you're able to do, I want to, I want to move, I want you guys to see. What you're able to do, I'll do it in my hand, is you're actually able to, oh, I'll do it with my right hand, is you're able to break up the rose petal. And um, then you've got these gorgeous, not just colour, but flavour of rose. So if you're wondering where you can buy these, um, you can buy them from, I've seen them in uh, Middle Eastern stores. They sell rose petals, dried rose petals, because they use quite a lot in their cooking. But also in, um, in Indian food stores or in Asian food stores. So there's a few varieties there. I haven't yet seen them in a normal supermarket. I have to say, it's not very common. But um, heavily used in you know these beautiful cuisines of the Middle East and these beautiful cuisines of the Indian subcontinent of course of Asia as well where they don't just go for the look but there's also the flavor and there's also the health benefits as well so break up your rose petals and I also use rose petals in my Rocky Road chocolate too. So it's, it's delicious with chocolate. Rose and chocolate just goes so well. So break up a few of those rose petals. And then when it comes to your, your nut of choice, um, you could just literally do rose petals. You don't have to do anything else. But if you'd like to add a bit of texture and once again a little bit of flavour, then you might want to choose a nut to go on the outside too. And it really is just a matter of, you know, roughly chopping whatever nut you choose obviously you can imagine how fabulous the vibrant green of a pistachio would be on the outside of this ladu it would be amazing and the flavor would be incredible but i actually had quite a bit of uh, i've got quite a bit of pecans in my house at the moment because i'm making a few pecan base uh, and goodies for us to try so I thought I would just go with the pecans because I do really love the flavor of pecan. Pecan for our American, uh, American friends, pecan. But I do really adore the flavor of, um, of the pecan. It's quite buttery and you know, it's, it's once again got a very distinct flavor when it comes to nuts and it does work really, really well with the base, which is our, our ladu here, which is starting to cool quite nicely. So I'm gonna, I, normally you'd leave it for about 10 minutes, yeah? Till it cools completely. You could also put it in the fridge for 10 minutes. But because I wanna show you guys the finished product, I'm actually gonna attempt to make a little ball now. It's cool, but it just needs to harden a little bit. And that's why I put it in the fridge. So when you're rolling your balls, ideally you put you know, like a teaspoon of mixture into the palm of your hand and yes, I am making them small because these treats are they're very it's very rich so you don't need much and I like to create them small because then we can get lots and lots and lots out of here so about a teaspoon at a time and you roll it in the in, right in the middle of your palm and then you use your opposing middle of the other palm and gently with no pressure you create a little ball like that so you could stop there you don't have to add any toppings if you don't want to. There is enough flavor in there that's really gonna just excite your palate, something crazy. But because we've got these you know, nuts, we've also got some rose petals here. You can then roll it just haphazardly in your nuts and in your, uh, in your rose petals, and then give it another little bit of a, a little bit of a push down so they really adhere even stick one on there they really adhere to the ladu and then what you are left with is just the most gorgeous little treat little treat that now can sit in the fridge to harden up even further um, ideally you want to before you um, you eat them you want to leave them um, in the fridge for about an hour just to firm up a little bit 
and what you will be rewarded with afterwards. What you will be rewarded with. Come up here and I'll show you what I got. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Check it out. Yes. You will be rewarded with a whole pedestal of the most gorgeous, gorgeous looking treats. Absolutely stunning looking treats. They are nice and firm as you can see. There's, you know, there's just some haphazard pecans. There's some haphazard rose petals on there. But the overall effect is the cutest and the most delicious little prebiotic, sugar-free, gluten-free, dairy optional treat that I know cocoa is a really hard, um, she's really hard to please when it comes to Indian food because she is a absolute lover of everything from the Indian subcontinent. She watches Bollywood, she enjoys the cuisine, she even is learning to speak Hindi and her, the sweets are her absolute favourite. So she was very surprised at how well mummy did when it came to um, making these ladu. So I hope you enjoyed our week of the most beautiful cuisine, most wonderful flavours, the most incredible, you know, exotic spices that are so good for our bodies as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the week we've had. Next week, another exciting week. I'm, I'm excited. I have to say this is one of my favourites. So next week, all week in Bridget's Kitchen, we're going to be doing a pickled week. So I'm going to be teaching you guys some awesome brand new pickle recipes so they're prebiotic we're going to do some fermenting as well which is really good for the it's, we're doing probiotics and prebiotics next week in the form of pickles things that you can have in your fridge so you'll always have access to the most healthy delicious addition to whatever it is you may cook, be cooking so all next week it's all pickle class but i hope you've enjoyed this week because i have enjoyed it i know my stomach's enjoyed it and also so has my body so um there you go guys this is coconut cardamom lado i hope you enjoyed it i hope you um stay safe i hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you very soon back here in bridget's healthy kitchen take care bye